How's it going everyone? Andrew Robinson here, back at it with another Max MSP tutorial video. In this video, we are going to be talking about the picked control object. That is an object that is a picture-based control for creating any kind of fancy UI that you want. And I'll admit, the help file makes it look a little daunting, but it's actually very, very easy to use, and it's going to open up so many doors when it comes to designing the user interface of your Max patch. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? First things first, we're going to double click, create a new object box and type in the word picked control. And that is P-I-C-T-C-T-R-L. And once you create that object, it's going to turn into this button. And this button does exactly what it looks like it would do. If you lock the patch and click on it, you'll see it blinks. And if we attach the output from this outlet into this right inlet of a message box, we'll see it's going to output a zero or a one, depending on if I am clicking it or not. And that's, that's, that's what this object does. It uses picture files to give you the same kind of interaction that you would come to expect from other objects that are native to max msp this isn't really any different necessarily than a toggle i'm going to create one by pressing t and you'll see that if we click on the toggle it also outputs a zero or one um the difference is it's like on a held state whereas like as soon as i let go of this button it's going to turn off but that's because this is in button mode uh, essentially it's just it's it is that same output but you can control and change the image that is being used. So let's right click on this object and we're gonna open up the help file for it. And you're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about. There's all these images over here that are being used as these same native max controls that we're used to. You have your buttons and you see there's this purple square and that same default button look. And if you click it, it's the same thing, one, one, but the image uh, appearance is different. Even, even with this guy with this little smiley face, if you click on him, it's still the same. Uh, you get a zero or a one, it's just that the image is different. Over here, this is a dial, and it's still sort of the same, except you're using it as a dial, but you can click it and turn it, and you get the output you would expect from the dial object as well. You can you can really do so much. This is a fun example where it's it's the same button type as over here. You can click it and it's a zero or a one, um, but it's you know being used in this way to animate this image instead, which is you know that's pretty fun. That's pretty cute. And this is a cute cat, um, and it's actually really easy to get this set up to work. It is all based on the dimension formats of the picture that you want to use. So if you click on this tab right here where it says picture formats, it's going to show you exactly the guide that you need to follow in order to have your picture work for this object. And I admit this is what looks very daunting. You look at this and you're like, I don't I don't get it, but it's actually very easy. If you just have an image file where the dimensions are symmetrical it's going to auto find like these bounds that it's looking for depending on the state of the image that you're trying to use this for. So whether it's a button or a toggle or a dial, as long as you follow this guide and you have like the dimensions all properly sorted, it's going to automatically know. And this, this image that we see here, like for this uh, toggle, is just showing you where in the overall image file that that image for that state needs to be. So for toggles here, you see there's this square that says not clicked value, and then you have this square that says clicked value, and then again a not clicked value but equals one, and a clicked value equals one. It would be like this is the image of it not being clicked, and then when it's in a state zero and you click on it, this is the image, and then it's going to change to the not clicked but output the one, because the toggle is now on, so that would be like this X here being in this state. I'm not currently clicking on it, but it is outputting one because I clicked it into that state. Now the toggle doesn't actually have a difference in that clicked versus non-clicked look, which is something you could do if you feel like it. But I'm gonna show you the difference in each state so it's more clear exactly how this is working. And I have this icon file that I used for a project recently. It is this little link icon here. It's just a black 
uh, chain icon. And what I did to make this work in my project is I went into Photoshop and I, I opened up the image and I saw the dimension size and then I just doubled the dimension that the image was on the X and Y axis. So it's twice as long here and twice as long this direction as well. And that gives us a nice even value where this lot, there's this invisible line right in the middle separating each image. Um, and then I duplicated the image over four times into each nicely fitting square. And I just changed the appearance of that, of that image to be what I wanted it to look. So this is our not clicked value zero state. So when the output is zero and I'm not clicking on it, this is what it looks like. When you click on it, but it's still in that zero state, it's gonna get slightly darker in color. And then it turns, because you clicked on it, it turns to that state of one. And that's going to have this nice clear yellow on color. And then if you were to click it again to turn it off, it's going to get slightly lighter in color because it looks like you know you clicked it and highlighted. And then it's gonna go back to this state once you let go. And again, all I did to set this file up was I took the whatever the dimension size was of this image and I doubled it in the X and Y. So it is for it's it's got the correct bounds so that when I import it into Max, it's gonna know that it's going to look for that center line and it's going to get each image exactly. And we can see exactly what that looks like when we open it up in Max. So what I have here is showing this process in action in a Max patch. We have this guy image here that I took from that help file and this is the toggle state. This is the state for toggles and the guide to follow if you're trying to create a picture based toggle. And again, it's the not clicked, clicked, not clicked one, clicked one. And we have those four squares still. This is our not clicked zero, clicked zero, not clicked one, and clicked one. And this is the image loaded in as the picked control object. So you can see I'm not clicking on it right now. It's showing this top left corner and the output is zero. I'm going to click on it. It's now changed to the top right image, but it's still outputting a zero and it's because I still have it clicked. Um, I'm going to now let go and it's now flipped to the not clicked value one because it is technically a, it's on, I clicked it on. So it's outputting that one and that is the image that it's showing. And again, if I were to click it off, it's going to go to that bottom right now, which is like a more highlighted look. And as soon as I let go, it's going to switch to the zero off state. And that is all that that is. I hope that that actually makes it very clear um, because it, it is really that simple. As long as you have your dimension size and you just double it and everything's lined up properly, it's very easy to use these images as toggles or whatever. And you can go ahead and make your own. Um, now you'll see there are all these other boxes, things that say like inactive value. Um, and we can actually look at that in it as in, in the help file. You see there's this example down here at the bottom. This is tr uh, showing the same thing I basically just showed there's this image for the not clicked value zero there's this image for the clicked value uh zero then there's this for not clicked value one which is looks like it's on and then if you were to click it in this is the one it would show and then you have two extra ones for the inactive value zero and inactive value one so if we click on the basic tab you'll see there's this, it shows this image and we can see the same thing in action. It's in that not clicked value zero state right now. But if I click it, it shows the impressed one. And as soon as I let go, we get that one. And then if it's, if we were to click it again, turn it off, so on and so forth. But we can see there's this active message as well. And we can turn the active state, so whether it's clickable or not, on and off. And if we were to say active zero, so that it's no longer clickable, you'll see it went to that blurred out image that is also in that image file. 
or it's right there. And again, it's just making sure you have all the dimensions correct. So if you knew what the dimension of this icon was, let's say it's 50 by 50 pixels, you can then double the X. So it, you would make that 100 instead of 50. And then you have three rows instead. So it would be tripling the Y and that would be 150. So this would be 100 by 150. And then you would just have each icon picture image that you want to use in the correct square to line up with this guy and it, it's it's really that simple i feel like the toggle makes it the most clear but again like we can see you're also able to use dials and there's this image file of this dial turning all the way around and sure enough if you were to look at the image file for that you would see that it has 64 different frames to be this dial and it has all these properties that you can change to to make sure that you are getting the correct look that you want and interaction that you want and that's basically all there is to it if you if you just follow this guide in the help file and you understand what I'm saying when I say you know double dimensions and like just make sure each image is in the correct square and change the appearance so that it matches what you want it to look like you have full control over the design of the pit control object and that is incredibly useful as it lets you create any kind of ui for your patch that you want there's some final things that i'm going to mention that you need to keep in mind and one um and kind of actually very importantly <laughs> if you create the pit control object you can open up the inspector uh, panel by clicking the eye icon and you can see there is this option down here for image and if you select and choose the image file that you want such as the one I have here and it's just a PNG file you're gonna see it's going to load in and you'll see it actually didn't load in correctly it doesn't have this look that I have over here it's got something else and it doesn't seem to be behaving properly and that's because by default it's set to have the button mode enabled which this is not this image file is not designed to be a button it's designed to be a toggle um, so you have to in the inspector window find where it says control type which is right here under behavior and you'll see by default it is set to button but if we just switch it to toggle then you'll see it uh, changed the way it's looking for where the images fall and what state they're supposed to be and now it's actually got the correct um, appearance that it's it's supposed to have and that's it uh, you choose the image file there you make sure you have the correct control type set that you want it to be depending on how you set up the image um, and that's all set in the, in the inspector window for this object now one last very important thing to keep in mind if you were to use this object and you were to hand your patch off to somebody else to use and they were to do whatever it's designed to do they're going to need the image file as well in order for it to be loaded in the pick control object it's not embedded in the object by default and as far as I'm aware there is no way to do that in the inspector window or with any kind of message or anything. Um, so in order to make sure that this is going to work properly and have the image when you send your patch off, it's a very easy, simple solution. But what you got to do is you got to create a folder uh, on your desktop. And in that folder, you need to have the max patch and you need to have the icon image for your picked control thing. As long as both of the, the patch and the image file are in the same folder and you send the whole folder off to somebody, Max is gonna know where to look, is gonna know where to look to load the image in. And that's pretty easy. And then if you were to, you know, if you wanna set this up as a project or something, it's very easy to do that and have this set up 
in that, and then you can compile it as an app as well. And then you don't even have to worry about sending off the folder. You could just send off your app with everything baked into it. And that's all it is, basically. So hopefully this kind of clears some of this stuff up. I know some of this is really confusing, um, but hopefully this made sense and you guys learned something new and you're excited to use this pick control object. Um, if there are any comments or questions still, please leave those in the comment section down below. If you learned something, please remember to like and subscribe because that is how I know you learned something. And I really appreciate it always when you guys do. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.